Hello and thanks for watching. So you have a copy of your baking soda and vinegar results. Now, what are we gonna do with this? First of all, I took this data here and I just copied and pasted it right over here to make it easier to see and easier to work with. One possible idea is to color code the data to show whether there was an increase or a decrease. So you might pick this one here, it went down a teeny tiny bit, so you might say that was a decrease and highlighted that color. And this one was the same, and this one was a slight increase, so maybe you highlight that in a different color, and so on. And so forth. Okay, now, some people want to make sure and not add the mass of the beaker and balloon. And that makes perfect sense. So here's a quick shortcut for that. We do a formula. We start formulas with an equal sign, and then we click on this amount right over here. That puts the data from cell A12 in that box, and we subtract out about 38 grams, which was the mass of the balloon and the beaker approximately. I don't want to repeat that over again, so I put my cursor right on that little blue square, I call that the magic blue square, and we drag down, and it repeats. And then I drag over, and it repeats, so you can see the formula in this box is B12 minus 38, and the formula in this box is B14 minus 38, and so on and so forth. Now let's get some totals. Because we've collected all our results, there might as well use the collective or the accumulative results of everyone. So I'm going to take that amount down here. I'm going to press equal sign, sum, click on sum. I'm going to click, hold, and drag. So it's about to find the sum of C12 through C19. I just press enter or return on my keyboard. And this is going to be my total before and my total after. That way, if any one person's results were just unreliable, we kind of average it in with the group. I'm going to repeat that same thing, or actually I'm going to drag this over here, and it repeats that same function for the next column. So as you can tell from a glance, we lost just a little bit less than 4 grams. So here's what you have to consider. You could ask yourself, what percentage change is that? And you would say, equal sign, close parenthesis, the bigger number minus the smaller number, close parenthesis, divide symbol, and then you take the total amount from the beginning. C20 minus D20 divided by C20 again, and that was a less than 1%. If we write 0.00, .00 9 as a decimal by changing it right up here to a percent, and we see that was less than a 1% decrease in mass. So we have this number now, 0.9%, or about 1% of the mass is missing from our results. If you were looking for a nice, easy, cut and dry answer, then I am sorry, because there is just not one to be found here. Because if you accept the idea that about 1% of the matter disappeared, and you're saying to yourself, could the atoms or molecules disappear from existence, then you have to follow up with the question, where did they go? But if you say to yourself, could something have affected the accuracy of our results, then you only have to answer questions such as, why might there be less material on the scale after the reaction? Or what else could cause the scale to not show the correct results in some people's trials? Interpreting the data is a little bit like interpreting a work of art. You have to make meaning out of it. You have to look at all the clues and you have to look at the human factors that might have gone into this and seen that some people may not have been as careful as others. Some people may have been uncertain about what they were doing. And you have to look at the results as a whole and put your best explanation on it. Thanks for watching.